Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome back to Narcosis. Previously, we were lost in the deep, and things were looking bad and surreal. Restore the O2. Nice. Flares. More O2 over there. Delicious flares. Get one more for the road. This is the good luck flare. Fire off a good luck. Oh my god! Gas. One of the most potent. Other industrial disasters may have been more severe, but Oceanova was groundbreaking, like you said. It could be years before we know all the consequences. We might never understand the ecological impact. It was very expensive. Listen, I don't care about your ecological impact. I don't care about that giant octopus. Like it or not, you're the human face of all this. So what do you say to your critics? I say I need to stab that giant octopus before it stabs me. I believe in what we were doing. But was it worth the cost? Oh, it's a crab fam. Oh god, they're eating somebody. No, they're eating a squid. Or a calamari. Good. Eat with, eat the calamari. I'm fine with that. A-okay. <laughs> Restore power to activate and lift. Let me just avoid the giant octopus. Hello, symbol of my guilt. How you doing? Following me, I see. Yep. Oh, here we go. Cross the gap, go for the tubes, bluff a Metroid. Let's go over here first. I see shinies. That is oxygen. Now, that might actually be a non-guilt-based death. We're looking at an optical corpse over here. Oh, look, a little isopod. Not that little, but... Like driving a forklift or swinging a 9-iron, eventually the ADS becomes an extension of you. Second nature, matter of habit. He wasn't on the drive crew. But still, Saleh somehow managed to log hundreds of hours in a suit. Not for fun, exactly. Just so we know he had. How did it feel? System shutting down around him, one by one. And which was worse? Slow death from a wound he couldn't see? Or betrayal by a tool which he thought he'd bond in? That looks like a pit. That is definitely a pit. Let's go this way. Spirit of Divers. I think that's an old fashioned dive suit, and it really is the Spirit of Divers. See it? Thank you, Spirit of Divers. Guide me. No, no, no. Oh, God. Can I make it in one go? Yeah. Where 
We're accomplishing something. Not quite fully sure what we're accomplishing, but we rerouted to the right one. So, let's see what happens here. Let's go down for a sec, see what's over here. Flares. Activate generator. Tree flare. Activate generator. Reset circuit. We have to balance it out somehow. Like there's a certain number um, we have to hit that we should have been paying attention to earlier. This is this is a puzzle. So no, too much overload. So let's activate two of these. Maybe three. Seven oh five. Let's activate these in. You're an Got engineer. you. You're a problem solver. You value logic and precision. You talk a lot about times, distances, values, and yet there were some challenges you couldn't solve. Numbers are easy. It's people that are complex. Numbers bring things into focus. No gray areas to distract you from getting things into perspective. Okay. So. Should be all clear here. F2. Going up. Stuff spilled all over the place. Need a key card. The key card is probably on a body down there. That we were supposed to uh, pick up while we were down there. So we're going back down. We gotta do a little more hunting. We ain't done yet here. Jump skip. So here's where the thing we need is. We gotta do some platforming. Minor amounts. Ooh, an invisible wall. So this is actually why we rerounded the methane. Was this. So we could platform between these green nodes. There is a body over in this area. Charge a little. Plop down. Touch more, we got. Clear. Good. First time on the 50th, trudging through the extractor farm always puts a little ice in your blood. Someone, can't remember who. Someone said it's like a forest of metal trees, roots like in the salt of the earth. JJ walked these fields pretty much daily. Now he's watching over them like a second-rate scarecrow, attracting more scavengers than he repels. I can still hear him now, cracking jokes and talking shit, like father like son. Does it get easier answering all the same questions? 
And people ask all kinds of questions. What they ask says a lot about their character. Especially when it comes to casualties. So what's the response when they do ask about the gory details? Screw off. I oblige. See which way they want to take it. I mean, what people don't get is that they don't want me to keep going. Not really. There's only so much blood and guts people can take before they lose their appetite. Everyone has I don't their like limits. this. Atmosphere. Got a little more horror style. It's an unusual amount of ice. No! Spirit of Diving! Why'd you forsake me? Damn it. Get me out of here. Come on. No. Go, go, I'm not, you're not taking me. I had no bearing in your death anyway. It's not fair. No manual for that. <laughs> You're very candid when describing some circumstances. Times when you felt crippled with fear, coming across the bodies of friends and colleagues. Yeah. It's clear you care, but there's an undercurrent of detachment in the way you present some of the more difficult moments. Was that your intention? No, I, I've heard that before. I just did my best to paint a clear picture. When it comes to empathy, there's no manual for that. That door is blocked off. Let's try going for this one. I mean, it is blue. Server room and viewing room. Oh! Well, I was about to say it's pretty, but there's a corpse right there. Depression, know the signs. First sign, stuck in a suit at the bottom of the ocean. No, this is the item. We're all in it together down here, but as much as someone could be, Anders was in charge. Always on the move. Checking up on people and on progress and writing it all down. I found him in the hallway overlooking the meadow. Did he drown? Maybe methane exposure. I don't... What does it matter? Who can say? Either way, everything around here just feels off. Okay. Charge up. Flare up. Good luck, Flare. Fire, good luck, Flare. Safe journey and good hope. Here we go. So the embodiment of my guilt is getting a little bit more... Deja vu. We've been to here before. There's no place to go. I have to ask again. Was it luck? Conditioning. Is that proof that you're trying? Conditioning and... Discipline. It's 
how I got down there in the first place, and that's how I got out. It's about keeping tethered to the task. You don't let yourself forget about the reality around you. You can't. I'm making progress somehow. Okay, system scrambled. Uh, Lovecraftian guilt specifications all up on the grill. Go to sleep. No, don't attempt to, buddy. Sweet relief. No! Just a little bit forever. Okay. I ain't. Damn! No! Stay over yes. Okay. You know, it, it is, it is what it is. Let's go deny. Let's go walking on a damn space station. Hey, squid. Well, calamari. Tasty. If things go wrong, don't go with them. That's an interesting pattern. You know, I just noticed you there. Origami. Five. So the numbers six. Funny every numbers six. That's a giant butt. Let's go back the other way. So we have five and a six. Sorry, little guy. It is what it is. So that so this wasn't just a random spill. That's a number. Zero. And calamari. So passwords five six one zero calamari. Oh, Calamari 3. Those are your numbers. So what else can you got throw against me? As the door is unlocked. Jump scare? No. Good. You saw terrible things. This is well told. And even well. if you made it to the surface, you couldn't count on being rescued. I mean, I'd have lost my mind. Did you ever feel like you were losing it just a little? Oh, no. No. When they found me, I'd been floating on the surface for at least five hours. I talked with therapists and trauma experts for months. Said I was hiding the hurt. But it's not true. I made mistakes down there, yes, but did I lose my mind? No. No way. No. The the spirit of diving and the uh, the suit that is full of guilt and ice that wants to kill me. Uh, perfectly normal. 
Hey, that's in my jack. You see stuff all the time. The first female rig manager I've met. Maybe the best. Halima was driven by the desire to make her family proud. Now here she is, knife in one hand, pills in the other. Heartbreaking. But there's an undeniable dignity in accepting the inevitable. Refusing to bargain. The youngest among us, and she didn't try to run. The captain going down the ship. Still, it's hard to imagine any parent taking pride in this kind of resolve. Not when it ends like this. Six life tips to help you get through a terrible situation. Number one. Don't be here. Ah, so weird. This doesn't make sense. That's a little bit much. It wouldn't just grow off. Probably still in dream. Crab. Crab's eating. Our friend over there now. Circle of life. Sorry, buddy. Alright, we've gone around. Terrible things. Hi. I'm pretty sure that you're the you're the my guilt. Um How you doing? We might be having company soon. Oh, the fish the fish was gnawing on their body. Damn it! Oh, damn it! Damn it! Ugh. Not that way. This way. You feel fire, don't you? Mr. Freeze. Batman and Robin was a terrible movie. No! 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 No more ice puns. No. Ever way. I'm not the one who needs to chill out. You do. Left, right, straight. Not that way. Not that way. Not that way. Time to warm things up a bit. Spirit of Tithing, thank you! This entire experience is defined by the fact that you came back alone. Your story started with 20 people, but ends with one. So when it comes to telling those stories, you're the only one who can. Yeah. There's a responsibility to get things right. For the record. Well, everything's frozen over. And there's a giant calamari. The spirit of diving is guiding me over there. Launch those and make a run for it. Keep moving. Oh god, I shouldn't have walked through the ice, that's cold. Player's doing his job. <laughs> Phil, more paper cranes. I'm trusting you, Spirit of Diving. Clear the path. Cleanse my soul. Teach these scrubs that I deserve to live. It's not my fault. They were just in the wrong place at the wrong time and I wasn't. That's 
that's all it is. What now? Fake spirit of diving. You gave me the thrust upgrade. I'll see you later. Hope you catch Moby Dick someday. There is a giant red light that's gonna like probably catch for me. If he sees me, it's probably gonna go crazy or something. Freeze beam. Sticking to the ceiling. Let's get out of here. All that matters is I survived. You didn't. Can't blame him for that. Kind of in this way, real fast. Far right. I'm not even sure if these lights are dangerous or not, but I'm avoiding them like I avoid Dan Maku. Back at the beginning. Welcome back, my friend. Gone. Now what? Up the rocker. And then we leave. Nope, symbolism. Put you the rest. Rest in peace, Russ. Hey. You alright? Come on, let's get back to the house. It's not getting any more and less complicated. Welcome back to Open Air. I'm Emily Kaler. If you're just joining us, my guest is Kip Mattis, sole survivor of the Oceanova disaster. Gone. His first book, Hell or High Water, is a harrowing account of his ordeal. Earlier, we talked about the life aquatic, Evacuation. escaping the flooded habitat, and being lost on the seafloor inside a half-ton titanium diving suit. The execution's not Kip, I know this might not sometimes be not easy, perfect, but, but I'd the like concept to sounds like a good movie plot. Can you read that for us? Yeah. The list is getting shorter. The hatch opens with its usual reluctance, flooding the room with light. Shark. The pod is there. I'm going home. Tomorrow I'll be the sole survivor. But for now, I'm not alone. In my loving again. In my dreams, Grandfather shakes me from his sleep. Sadly, I help him don the tools of his trade. So frail a husk. The copper helmet alone should be too heavy to bear. But somehow, between my bedroom and the beach, the ragged suit restores the ragged man. At the wire's edge, it puts a finger to his lips and points to a knife at his waist. An antique that's lost its luster, its edge. With a strength and purpose I've never seen but always known, he cuts the ties that blind bind us and strides into the sea. So the, the spirit of diving we meet is his grandfather. Because we carry the knife. The grandfather's knife or something. In the sense it's kind of protecting us and guiding us. Because the grandfather was lost at sea, you see.
So symbolically, the knife kind of gives us the strength to continue on. And this is shown in the hallucinations. How did you feel when you figured it out? At that point, and that close, I was running on fear. So when I saw another suit in the room, it's almost too much to process. I couldn't believe that it was... Someone is actually alive? Virgil? Is that you? Virgil? Yes, it's me. Made it. Just like me. How did you get... I thought everyone was... Only I'm locked inside the pod and he's locked out. Can you hear me? I can't stop the launch. There's no override. He's not coming back. Oh, God. I'm sorry. And that's on me. There is. So are you saying that if you did something differently, that Virgil would have lived? That's right. Until I saw him, fear in his eyes. The narrator wasn't I me. I was the only one. It was a bad call. This can't be happening. Job. No regrets. Only flares. Well, we're here till the funnel flare goes out. That's it. Later. You didn't kill him. Really? Who did? Bad luck? I'm responsible. Look, I'm up here talking with you. And he's still out there. Nothing but the sea to comfort us. Grandfather. I'm home. So that was a bit of a interesting twist in the end, actually. I didn't fully see that coming. I, I guess there's a little bit of betrayal there when you, when the crash happens, and they say like you crash into the ones you're trying to save, and I, that kind of stuck in my head for a little bit because I was kind of like, I don't remember just trying to save anybody. I felt like we we're trying to live. So I'm assuming the sub crashes into you, um, goes wrong. The first one of the people on the sub goes back. The, the narrator makes it back. Uh, and they don't realize you're alive still in a suit. And of course they take off in the evac pod. And that's how that narration makes sense. Um, a solid kind of atmospheric horror game. It's not like horror horror. It's more of a um, horror of the deep thing. Uh, there's some parts I feel like could be better executed. Like there's not much variety in the the underwater life and fauna, and that's not because of it's the it, it's the abyss. I mean, that's just the amount of things they programmed in. Um, I'm not talking about necessarily like adding more enemies. I'm just saying like it would have been nice to see some other um, deep sea creatures, even just in the background or some more atmospheric noise in that regard.
Um, and they did do some cliches like the suits behind you and the mannequin, not mannequin kind of thing. But the overall kind of story and the atmosphere and the kind of twist and everything kind of linked together. And it's a very unique premise and it works. So I liked it in the end. Kip, it's Good been trip. more than a year anyway, since all this happened. So thank you all for watching me play Narcosis. You book and told I'll your see story. you guys later. And take Are it you easy. ready to be done? Yeah, yeah. It's time to move on. Get myself working again. Kip Mattis, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thanks for having me, Emily. So this is, here's the big twist. Because when, so, when you look at that knife, there's no profile here. And that was another thing I thought was kind of weird. Uh, and of course, you're playing Virgil. Here it is. Grandfather's diamond career ended before I was born. But even though I knew their stories by heart, but for learning to read or write, I have just two memories of him and water. In the first, I'm old enough to walk, but just learning to ride. We stop the picnic in the scarlet field. A small pond catches my eye. And then I'm falling. I'm going to drown. I'm sure of it. Two seconds later, his hand's on mine, pulling me up. The next day, I started learning to swim. So that's his grandfather's knife. That's the person who guides him. Grandfather lost in a diving accident, I'm assuming. Uh, Kip is the one who survives here. Kipling Mattis was born in 1980 in Lompoc, California. He graduated from California Polytechnic State University in 2002 with Bachelor of Applied Science degrees in Computer and Mechanical Engineering. Before joining the Ocean Nova Initiative, he worked on numerous energy research and engineering projects. Mr. Mattis currently lives in Berksemere on the coast of France, Hell or High Water, Surviving Ocean Nova as his first book. Um, we missed two people. One was Russ, because we didn't check the body in the beginning, because I didn't know that was a mechanic yet. And... This person here, Russell Andrew, who I think we just outright missed. And of course, we missed some of their items and everything else. Here's open air. 